Greetings everyone, this is Danny from hardtravel.com. We're currently on the beautiful Disney Wonder in Juneau. You can see it behind me, so follow me as we head along the top deck. So currently we're on deck 10, which is the wide world of sports deck. So those of you who are Disney fans, you'll of course recognize the term. They also have the resort in Florida as well. So one of the cool things here, this is one of the best viewing platforms as you're on the very front of the ship, you can look just out, but also they have a huge protective area here that actually stops the wind. So when you're playing basketball and all the other sports, uh, you get you know, a nice uh, environment, but also it's a great place to view if it's a little too windy up front. So let's head on over to the basketball court. See one of the seaplanes landing right next to us here in, uh, in Juneau. Pretty cool. So we have a half-size sport court with a basketball hoop over here, but they play a ton of different games here. You know, it's Disney. There's always constant programming going on. Right now we're in port and just about everybody's out uh, on an excursion right now. Uh, that's why there's not that many people up here. But uh, once again, a very large sports area for kids and adults alike. Ah! There we go. That's all. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna head from the wide world of sports deck towards the back, towards the aft on deck 10. So what you'll see is a lot of uh, loungers out, lots of separate seating areas. A lot of what happens on uh, Disney Cruise actually happens on the top deck. So follow me down this little ramp. One of the things that I like compared to some of the big cruise lines is you can always get a towel. You don't have to worry about checking it in and checking out. So here you've got uh, one of the big dirty towel uh, areas to put it. And then there's clean towels here that uh, you just have to pull and open up, and so you've got uh, got towels always. I really like that to me, that's a big difference than a lot of the other cruise lines. And then also because we're in Alaska, you have blankets there as well. Um, I've grabbed them a few times when I've been on the top deck as we're cru cruising through. One other fun fact is this is a great place to sit with your kiddo when you're doing pirate night, which is a little bit further back, but uh, these are really great places to, to set your stuff down or sit when there's stuff going on on deck. So. One of the great things about Disney is that I think better than any other cruise line, they fulfill the needs completely of the kids and the adults. So right here is the adults only pool. There's two hot tubs, never gonna have to, to worry about kids in there. Um, you also have the pool area and then the signals bar. So those are all spaces that, that adults can escape to. Also, um, they have loungers down there that have really plush, really thick uh, padding as well. Just elevates that adults only experience. And then finally, um, you can kind of see it just behind me now, but the big window bank here, that's the uh, coffee shop, the cold, Cove Coffee Shop, so it's a great place to go in the morning, have a nice cup of coffee, and once again, kids have all their own things to do, so they're not gonna be in that space. All right, so I'm gonna walk over the, uh, the adults only area. You can get a little bit better view here. Um, they have the pads off the loungers right now because we're in Alaska, it was drizzling this morning. Uh, they'll put them back on when we get underway. So one of the other great things is throughout the ship, they have these great covered areas. Uh, one, of course, to stay out of the sun when you're in the tropics, um, but also when we're going through the glaciers, it was a great place to get under, uh, to, to do some of the scenic viewing as well. So this is kind of the perfect angle that I wanted to point out a couple more things to you. So one is the concierge lounge. So if you happen to get concierge class on board the ship, in addition to all the other perks and amenities, you also have access to an exclusive lounge and it has some great viewing points. So first is up top, that entire top area, is a deck um, that is just for the concierge uh, class guests. And then just below it here, you can see uh, the windows here and then all the way over there, and it's kind of continuing on the other side as well, is the concierge lounge. So they have snacks and a coffee machine in there and then throughout the day they'll, they'll change it up. Um, but in the evening they have a really, really great uh, uh, you know, happy hour hors d'oeuvres that they bring out. Uh, it, the, old, the whole experience really, it, it really is exclusive. And what I love is it has the best viewing areas on the entire ship. So you can sit there and relax uh, when we're going through the glaciers, when you're in uh, the Caribbean, wherever it is that you are, you kind of have that, that quiet space away from everything else. And they even have a separate area for kids and adults in the lounge. So the Disney Wonder is intentionally made to be an old steamship from the past. So it goes back to all the vintage uh, Disney, Disney things in general. Uh, but there's a couple things that I wanted to point out to you. So one is uh, the color combination. So it's very intentionally chosen, as you would imagine with Disney. This is a great place to see it. So um, you can't really see the whole of the ship, but it's black and, and the ship is in the shape of an old steamship. They also have, the it's, it's all built around the colors of Mickey Mouse, of course, right? So you have the, the black, the white, the red uh, for Mickey, and then of course the yellow. So all of that ties together. And one thing to kind of create the beautiful continuity of the ship is this is actually a fake smokestack. There's no engine in there, nothing that comes out of there. It's actually where the Vibe uh, Team Club is, and it's also uh, part of the Concierge Club as well. So Disney always goes over the top for aesthetics to make it look uh, unique and spectacular, and this ship is one of a kind for sure. 
So midship in the funnel, you're gonna find the Vibe uh, Teen Club. So this is 14 to 17 year old. It's a really, really, really cool aesthetic. They've got old school video games, Guitar Hero, they do dance parties, karaoke, all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, and it wasn't that long ago that they totally renovated the funnel uh, to kind of make, make that uh, really, really amazing. So we'll, we'll put some pictures in here, but just because uh, there's always teens in there, we're not gonna take any video footage in there. Um, but I also wanted to point out, this is also the entrance for the concierge lounge. So follow me on in. All right, so the Vibe Teen Club, there's a stairway. You can take the elevator up or just take the special stairway here. You see it designated uh, with different uh, carpet and everything. Um, and then if you follow me a little further in, this is the uh, the entrance to the concierge lounge, which we just showed you from the outside as well. So this is it. All you have to do is uh, take your key. Your key, of course, is all programmed. If you have concierge access, just put the key up there and then you head on into the lounge. All right, so we're heading out the entrance of the concierge lounge is once again right behind me. And then to get to the top deck of the concierge uh, area, this is it right here. So once again, you've got the key card access. Um, and uh, there's no internal elevator, so there's also uh, an outdoor area if, if you need wheelchair accessibility where you can get all the way up to the best uh, viewing on the ship. So if you'll follow me this way, I'm gonna head towards the main pool area. So one of the things that's unique about, uh, about purchasing a Disney cruise is that you're kind of purchasing a ton of experiences all at once, just like when you go to Disneyland. So they always have a party on almost every single Disney cruise. They have a, a pirate night, like a Mickey's pirate night, uh, and then a huge deck party. In fact, uh, Mickey starts from up there and has a, there's a zip line, uh, and he, he goes all the way across uh, the ship and then comes down. It's a really, really cool thing, and they have full fireworks. So we're currently on an Alaska cruise, so fireworks are not allowed, which makes sense. Um, so what they did instead is they did the frozen uh, gathering. So there's a huge frozen party down here on the deck. My three and a half year old, of course, loved it completely. Um, but all of this area is kind of utilized as part of uh, all the shows. One other thing that I was just going to point out here is um, the pool's down there, but when you're when they have the big shows, you don't see the pool at all because it comes out and there's it turns into a dance floor. So it doubles the space on the deck, and then you also have the space up here so that you can generally get a really good view of uh, the pirate party and everything that, that entails. Right there is the main stage, singing, dancing, uh, sail away parties, all kinds of stuff happen. And once again, all of that is included in your Disney cruise. So on the main deck, uh, one thing that I really, really appreciate is that they always have lifeguards. So lifeguards on duty when the pools are open. There's two uh, hot tubs here. You also have a main pool area um, and then a little bit of uh, overflow from some of the dining. And then down there you have Pinocchio's Pizzeria. So that completes the, the entire area. One final thing that I really, really appreciate is they do have uh, life jackets for the little ones. Uh, all you have to do is just ask or just grab one, check it out, uh, and you can use it right away. All right, so the last thing that I wanted to point out on the main deck is the Funnel Vision. So it sounds like a funny name, but really it's the name for uh, the giant TV screen. So this is the one of the three places on board where you can watch first run movies and then old Disney classics as well. On the last cruise when we were in Mexico, my daughter and I were in the pool quite a bit watching all of her favorite movies up on the screen. Uh, also in the evening, uh, when the weather's really nice, they put it up there. You can have a, have a blanket, popcorn, whatever it is, but you can sit out and watch there. So once again, uh, lots of places on board to see original first run uh, feature films, and of course, every Disney classic that you're gonna love. What's unique about this uh, particular ship is that there's a third pool area in the back. So as we're walking by the main funnel, of course, you got Mickey up here. Uh, but one uh, kind of fun fact that they always do on the ship is the, uh, the beginning of the, the ship's horn. Instead of the normal horn, it's when you wish upon a star. It's the first seven notes from wish, when you wish upon a star. So the second you get on that Disney ship, you hear the music, you kind of get in, in the mood. So we're going to walk back to uh, the littler kids area and more of kind of the, the, the play and fun water areas on board the ship. So once again, you have a couple more um, covered areas, which are fantastic, especially when it's drizzling like right now, or if it's raining in the tropics. And over here, um, what you're gonna see is the Aqua Lab. So they're actually just uh, reopening it here. Um, and I wanted to point out a couple things. So one, of course, uh, the, the slide is awesome. All the way up to the top there, you can see the stairway that, that goes all the way up. So you climb all the way to the top to take the slide down. Only have to be 38 inches tall, so you can keep that in mind uh, for your kids and, and if they want to go on it. Um, and then you have uh, the Aqua Lab here. Got all kinds of fun things that are going to be squirting everywhere in just a minute. Uh, the water fills up and dumps out. 
Um, and then of course, uh, you've got the, the kids' pool. And then finally behind it, you have Dory's Reef. So this is for the littlest of kids. So on the top of deck 10, if you'll follow me along, we're gonna walk uh, around the rest of the deck, which is actually where uh, the restaurant Palo is. So up here, uh, you're gonna see the glass opening and you'll notice that it's glass all the way around, provides some of the most beautiful views from the entire ship. They also have some overflow uh, dining area because Cabana's, which is the main buffet, is just below us. So if you follow me around, we're gonna take a walk around and then we're gonna head on into Palo. So the back of the ship, the sides of the ship, all of those are fantastic for viewing points when you're looking at the glaciers or any of the scenic cruising anywhere in the world that Disney does that. A lot of times people rush all the way to the front, but the back behind Cabana's and then up here as well is a really fantastic place where you wanna stake out a view. So we're just getting ready to head into Palo Restaurant. This is an adults only specialty restaurant on board the Disney Wonder and it features uh, elevated Italian fare. So come on in. So a couple things that I wanted to point out right away is one, you see all the Venetian masks. So the name Palo actually comes from the poles that you're gonna find all over Venice. We were just in Venice a couple weeks ago, makes perfect sense. Um, and the menu is fantastic. So I wanted to point out a couple things right when we came in. The first one is there's a sign here that kind of goes, goes into it, but it's 18 and up. So this is an adults only area. Disney does a great job with that all over the ship as you'll see on the tour. Um, but uh, in this particular restaurant, you do have to dress in formal wear. So they're a little bit more flexible compared to most cruise lines, but uh, they give you the the exact description of it uh, so just make sure that you follow along also reservations are required so you definitely want to get those right away so come on in I'll show you a little more of the restaurant so you're gonna see fresh flowers everywhere throughout the entire restaurant got a beautiful little sitting area okay um, and here is a little bit of the wine cellar so because it's a high-end Italian restaurant of course they have a phenomenal wine cellar uh, they have it all over the ship as well so if you're a wine lover Disney is a great option for you so you can see that, uh, that they're just getting set up. It'll be set up completely for dinner uh, in, in just a little bit. Uh, but I wanted to point out that we're on deck 10 in the aft, which is the best views on the ship. Um, you've got a huge deck space just behind us. So it's a great place to be as you're sailing away, which is where you generally are on the Disney Wonder at, at the time when they have the restaurant open. So follow me through. A couple other things that I wanted to point out is one, they have a bar area, which I really like, and it has a full uh, uh, cafe there as well. So you've got an espresso machine, which is a must in any real Italian restaurant, and they serve Ely coffee, which is some of my favorite anywhere in the world. So you notice a few little touches throughout. Um, the chandelier happens to be a Venetian blown glass. Um, but I want, what I wanted to point out is that they have an open kitchen concept. I really enjoy that. You can have a little more interaction um, with, with the servers and the cooks and everything. Um, but it, it kind of it gives you that Disney feel of having everybody part of the experience. Another really cool thing is that they have genuine pizza ovens on board. So there's the pizza ovens back there. It is an Italian restaurant. Of course, you have to have great pizza, but they do a really, really excellent job of that. I wanna show you one more thing before we head out. So you can see the pole that I'm talking about where the name Palo comes from, they have one in here. This is a private dining room area. So if you're traveling with a big groups of uh, friends or family, of course, keep in mind, everybody has to be 18 and over to dine here. But if you're traveling with a large group of friends, this is that perfect place to have a birthday or anniversary celebration, or just get together and have a great time while the kids are in the kids club. Okay, so now I'm heading into the Bippity Boppity Boutique. This is the, the special kids area on board where you can get a full makeover. So they have all the princess dresses on pirate night. They also have the pirates. Uh, one of the really cool things I like now is that you can get a, instead of just a Mickey pirate makeover, you can get a Captain Minnie pirate makeover as well. But my daughter, the last time we did at Disneyland was Cinderella, loved it, got the hair done, and then gets to go beat uh, all the princesses. So really cool thing. So head on in here, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay. All right, so this is the salon that every young lady dreams of, right? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. So you can see the chairs in here. There's also a waiting area. So that's where dad usually sits or mom. Um, but you can see all the different dresses because you can pick which makeover that you get. It'd be Belle or Aurora or Cinderella or Merida. There we go. Tiana. I love it. Nice tiara as well. Everybody needs a tiara, right? Fair enough. All right. So of course, on a cruise ship, you definitely want to keep nice and clean and sanitary. So one of the things that uh, Disney has outside the dining venues is a huge uh, hand washing area. And just want to point out the stool. So for my daughter, she loves it anytime she can do it herself, right? And so that's, that's one thing you'll find out throughout the Disney cruises. They try to provide them with the opportunities to do something by themselves. So hand washing. <laughs> and if you head on in, we're now heading into uh, Cabanas. So Cabanas is the main buffet on board the Disney Wonder. And like you'll find throughout the entire ship, you got our fun Disney friends. So 
Hank the Octopus from uh, the Finding Nemo movies, of course. Um, you'll see that it's not, it, it's actually not a huge buffet for the size ship, um, but, it, but it's, it's very, very thorough. So seating all throughout, Normally, breakfast and lunch, this is where you're gonna have everything set up. They do have dinner here. Some nights on the cruise, you just wanna to, want to double check. But what I've found is it's been a really, really fantastic assortment of foods. Um, they always have the staples that kids like, the macaroni and cheese and rice and uh, French fries and, and things along those lines. Uh, but they also have a really great variety of ethnic foods. I had some amazing Indian food for lunch today. Um, and then another uh, kind of unique thing uh, that they always have is they always have a salad bar here. Once again, it's not open right now. Um, they have a ton of cut fruit, which is very helpful to have for a family. And then here they always have uh, crab claws and shrimp. So just kind of a, a really nice thing to have. So as we head on in today, uh, Indian food. Uh, but I just wanted to show you one of my, uh, my daughter's absolute favorite things on board. Uh, really fun thing. So if you head over here, Still not convinced why it's one of her favorite things, but you have a secret way to get down to decks eight and nine. Um, our room is in the back on deck seven, and so this is a great way for us to come in and out. We don't have to go forward to the elevators or anything. Um, but once again, anything, anytime something is fun or secret or different for kids, they really, really appreciate it. So I'm gonna walk you just through some of the seating and point out a couple things. So they replenish these constantly, um, but what you're gonna see is you've got uh, you know, your, your forks and knives and napkins here. There's always a ton of them. With dining with kids, a lot of times you need some extras. Um, you've got salt and pepper at the tables. Um, some fun little architectural features as well. There's some cabanas popped up different places, the street light, okay? And then back here, this is, uh, is usually our favorite place because generally the desserts are all in the back. But everything you just saw on this side is on the other side as well. Um, you can see the, the features I was talking about, the cabanas, namesake of the restaurant. Um, but I wanted to walk you through kind of the, the, the drink stations, and you have these all over the ship. So one of the things that Disney does is they include all the soda. So you don't need to buy a soda package like you would on other cruise lines. Um, they always have them out and readily available on the deck. They have the paper cups that are really easy. Um, but if you want to just grab a, uh, you know, a lemonade for the kids or a Sprite or a Coke, they're all right here for you. They also have vitamin water and tea. Um, and if you keep coming along here, You've got the juices throughout the day. So right now they have cranberry, apple, orange, uh, and uh, earlier today they had some, some mango that was really good as well. Um, setups for tea, so lots of different teas. They have Twinings, a good, a good brand, uh, several different choices, same as if you get it from room service, your honey. Um, always have chocolate milk everywhere. It's Alaska, you gotta have chocolate milk for sure. Um, and then the coffee stations as well. So um, this one's just out of, out of service right now, but you can see throughout the entire ship, they have the drink station set up. There's four of these just in the cabanas right now. So I'm gonna take you out to my favorite place to dine on board, which is deck nine aft. This is where we kind of set up shop when we saw the glaciers just yesterday. Um, but once again, there's a lot more dining area. It's not set up right now because uh, uh, dinner's not for another couple hours. Um, but you have a lot more dining space in the areas out here. And then you have uh, stairways up both to, to deck 10. And there's more places to view the glaciers from as well. But once again, this is my favorite place to eat on the entire ship. And one little fun secret is heaters. So if you sit right here, uh, you got nice heat lamps just above you. So it keeps you nice and warm, especially when you're out here in Alaska or maybe you're in Northern Europe. All right, so there's tons of dining options on board the Disney Wonder. And one of the ones that's open uh, most of the day actually is Daisy's Delight. So it's some grab and go snacks. You got great fruit, uh, sandwiches that are pre-made. And then at the very end, there's also a build a bowl station where you can uh, put rice and noodles, kind of build your own uh, bowl or salad. So follow me over here. Okay, so you got the pre-made salads, sandwiches. They also have a panini machine back there. Awesome people as well. Hey, Beatrix. <laughs> and then all the, the cut fruit, which is great uh, for kids, especially for my family as well. And then finally, if you follow me over, you've got the build -a bowl station. You've got a bunch of different options here for you. Um, soups and rice and, and all those kind of things. You also have a salad station as well. All right, so we're at Pete's, everybody's favorite tow truck driver, of course. And uh, this is kind of the, the end of the line here, but you'll see they got ketchup, mayo, all those things that you would need, all the condiments. And if you follow me over, there's actually two different places where you can order uh, and kind of two different types of foods. So the first set of food options are exactly what you would expect. Incredibly family friendly, which you're gonna find at uh, most pool grills and bars around uh, any cruise ship. But you got hamburgers, cheeseburgers, veggie burger, fish burger, hot dog, uh, bratwurst, I've had that a few times, really good. Chicken tenders and fries. So family can almost always find something. But one of my favorite places to eat on the entire ship is actually on the other side here. So here um, you have two different shawarma options. You can make gyros, you've got the, uh, the lamb, um, and then you also have uh, the chicken as well. So, and then all the, uh, the Mediterranean condiments that you'd expect, 
uh, the tzatziki and uh, hummus and things like that. But it's a really, really, really delicious option. Uh, and it's nice to kind of mix it up as well. But this is one of our favorite types of food in the entire world. So continuing on our food tour of deck nine of the Dig Disney Wonder is uh, Pinocchio's Pizza. So just point out the, uh, the vests here. They always have these for the kids, all the different sizes. Really, really nice touch. Okay. And as you move around to the midship pool area, um, right as we head up this ramp here, we will be at Pinocchio's Pizzeria. My daughter's a really big fan of Pinocchio, so we have to check in with Pinocchio every once in a while, whether we get pizza or not. But uh, here we go. There's the sign, of course, for it. Everything done to Disney standards. And then, um, of course, the pizza option. So this is another place on board where they have a full pizza oven. They have pizzas out here constantly. You can also uh, order your own, uh, make your own to order. Um, completely up to you. But this is one of the latest venues that's open. So it's usually open until midnight every night. But uh, if you want a pizza, what better place to get it from than our favorite Italian, Pinocchio. So just past uh, Pinocchio's, there is the, the main pool bar. Uh, one thing that I've noticed on this ship is in general, people are always around to offer you drinks if you need them. Um, but uh, this is uh, what I really like is they have a couple of the Alaska ones on tap. So right now, the Alaska Kolsch Ale, a summer special for Alaska Brewing Company. Really, really, really delicious. And one thing that I've noticed compared to some of the other mega ship lines is that the drinks are actually reasonably priced on board. So I've really, really appreciated that. They're about half the price that they were when we sailed on the Norwegian Joy just a couple days ago. So one little fun thing too is that on the uh, the tables out of the pool area, they have the full menu here. There's a slightly different one for Pinocchio's bar as well, uh, but it's a really convenient thing. You can wipe it down. Uh, so once again, something very Disney, uh, and of course it looks like the porthole of a ship, but that's your drink menu. Then of course you have Quacks, which is where you're gonna find some great smoothies and, and things like that. But right here, you have one of the most popular places on the entire ship, the soft serve machine. Lots of Disney touches, in fact. Right above it, you'll notice the uh, Monsters, Inc. reference, which is what this is about. Not my best work, uh, but it's ice cream, right? Like the, the Monsters, Inc. do it. So, cheers. Mm. And then the final location would be Sully Sips. My favorite thing to find here is the Dole Whip. So we go to Disneyland all the time. We live really close by, and that's the first place that we usually go. We go to the Enchanted Tiki Hut, and we get our Dole Whip. So if you're looking for a smoothie or something like that, this would be the spot for it. So we're here on the, the main pool deck, actually. This is the, where everything happens show-wise uh, for the Disney Wonder outside. Uh, right here is one of the places where you're gonna see the characters. This is where we got to see uh, the Alaska Mickey and Minnie yesterday. And then you also see they have some uh, ice here, just a fun touch. Uh, we were at a glacier yesterday, so they got some uh, glacial ice for the kids to be able to touch. But here's where they have characters, also up on the stage, big dance parties. You see all the lighting and everything that they have here. Um, and then once again, this is the main pool, and you kind of can see it. It's retractable. Where it come, the dance floor comes out on both sides. So this, in, in just a short period of time, when they have a party out here, everything, all the, all the deck chairs will go away. Um, the the uh, pool will be covered up, and you have a huge dance floor, and then of course all the areas up top. So now we're heading into the Cove Cafe. This is actually the, the whole adults only area. Got some great seating here. And then of course the coffee shop where I start all of my mornings on board the Disney Wonder. All right, there we go. So there's lots of great comfy seating areas in here in the Cove. And then I just wanted to point out my favorite place, the snack area. Um, and they always have this uh, throughout the day. And then also one other fun thing is they always have warm croissants. So if you're a warm croissant person like I am, that's where you get it with some butter and jam. And the baristas here are really, really amazing. So you can see they have everything you would expect in a coffee shop, a really, really, really high-end uh, espresso machine, all the syrups. And then they also have some really cool coffee experiences as well. So I recommend the, the uh, chocolate experience personally. So we'll head back outside. And I don't know if you can notice it, but I can notice it completely. We're in the adults only area. It's very, very quiet. You got the bar here, you got the pool. The pool is almost empty. Um, whereas there was quite a few kids in the, uh, the main family pool as well. So two hot tubs, pool, and then lots of seating areas. Most importantly, it's a quiet adults only retreat on board the Disney Wonder. All right, so now we're heading into the Census Spa and Salon. So it's exactly what you think it is. It's an incredible spa. Disney does a great job. All the top of the line products, of course, uh, some of the best uh, masseuses and uh, people doing treatments in the entire industry. Um, so as you come in, you can see the main desk, grab your, uh, your Census Spa menu. It's gonna have all the information, all the pricing. Um, over to the side here, um, you're gonna see, uh, walk into the, the beauty shop salon, the barber shop, um, and then also the, the chill spa lounge. And then if you follow me over just a little bit further, you have the, uh, the spa villas. It's kind of unique, um, but what I like is their couples treatments rooms. They actually have a hot tub in there, a place to relax, um, but there's, there's three of them just inside there. So I'm just gonna open up the door uh, so you can see what it looks like, um, but uh, we're not gonna go in because all of them are currently in use. So you can kind of see down the, the uh, hallway there. And at the very end of that hallway is actually the, the fitness center. So 
I'm gonna go in the more traditional route this way. So if you'll follow me, I'm going ahead and into the, the heart of the spa itself. Right. So Disney has all of the treatments that you would expect, the, the hot stone, bamboo, you know, Swedish massage, all of that kind of stuff. So you can see some of the, the, the entrance to some of the treatment rooms. Once again, we're not gonna go in there because the ship is, uh, is going right now. And if you follow me down this way. Okay, we got some more treatment rooms on either side. And then as we keep going, one thing that I wanted to point out earlier that I really, really like, and I, you know, they have it in the spot, but they also have it all over the ship. So they have these water bottle refill areas. Um, one of the ways a lot of the cruise ships made money forever is uh, by selling bottled water. And by having this, you can refill it. Um, of course, it gives you the count of how many water bottles it's helped eliminate. But for having a family on board, it's just so convenient to have water all the time. And I've also noticed that Disneyland's done it a lot more in the parks, especially with the recent renovation of Disney, uh, the, the, the Star Wars land. They added a ton more throughout Disneyland. Keep on heading in. Men's changing room. Once again, we're not going to head in there, but you got a, a sauna in there um, and a changing room. And then, of course, the uh, the fitness center, which occupies the very front of the ship. So as you come in, you're going to notice all of the classic machines that you would expect. Um, you also have uh, treadmills. I like the treadmills that are very up front, the ellipticals, the bikes. So as you can see, this is the best view in the entire house, of course. Um, and in addition to all of the machines that they have here, um, they also have the spin classes, they have uh, yoga classes, morning stretch, all of those kind of things on board the Disney Wonder as well. One of the things you always notice with Disney is the little touches. They get it, they understand what you want. So in the fitness center, you've got some chilled towels to cool down afterwards. You've got uh, bananas and uh, oranges, of course, for uh, rehydration, take care of all those, uh, don't get any cramps, and then the water. So just a little touch that's, uh, that's really, really nice. Okay, so one thing that you'll find on board the Disney cruise ships are the fish, right? So this is called a fish extender. The first time it was mentioned to me, I had no idea what it was talking about. Um, but this started on a Panama Canal cruise a long time ago where guests that were trying to get to know each other um, on a longer cruise. And so what they did is they started hanging things from the fish and then you would put gifts in there. So some people set up gift exchanges. Uh, some people participate with friends or family groups. Um, some of them even just pixie dust, right? Where you take little fun Disney gifts or characters and you can give them to them. But the idea is when, when you get back to the, the room, um, there might be a gift from you know a stranger or from a friend or a family a lot of times family groups plan it out really really elaborately uh, as well but what kid doesn't like to have a gift at their door when they get back also i'm just going to point these out you can buy these on board the ship but these are uh, disney specific magnets what's really important is people do decorate their doors and they go all out we'll show you some more of them in just a minute um, but what's important is you can't use tape on there at all. So these are magnets. The doors are of course magnetic, um, but please don't tape anything up there because they'll take it down for obvious reasons. Tape leaves a residue and uh, will destroy the doors after a while. So if you walk me a little bit further, there's a couple more that I'll point out. So here you have uh, my stateroom is my castle decorating the door and then a very similar uh, fish extender. Um, you can see that some people you know, don't participate. Usually it's the first time cruisers that don't know or don't quite understand what it's all about. Um, but uh, once again, you'll see the door decorated for my daughter. It's really cool because she knows what's on our door, um, so she can always find it. So I'll just point out two more, um, two more doors that have been, you know, completely decorated with lots of different things. Most of them are things that people created themselves and made, um, but it's just a lot of fun because it takes that uh, cruise experience to the next level. And here's our uh, our neighbors right here as well. But gives you kind of a, a really good idea of what it's all about. One more fun feature that you can put in there is, I've seen this a lot more as a magnetic whiteboard, um, so you can let each other know what you're doing, um, and then also just leave some fun notes uh, for uh, those who you're traveling with. So a couple things that I wanted to point out about the back of the ship. The Disney Wonder is incredibly unique. In fact, I don't know any other ship that has passenger space like this back here. So you see the uh, the stairway that goes up, and then there's actually, this is up to deck eight, and then there's another stairway that goes up to Cabana. So it's a really quick shortcut for you, uh, especially if you're staying in the back of the ship, to run up and get food really quick, especially for the kiddos. Um, the other thing that I want to point out, you can see another elevator down, down here, or sorry, another stairway that goes down here. Um, but I wanted to point out, Disney does a phenomenal job with accessibility on their ship. So this is a really old ship comparatively, um, yet they have a ton of great handicap accessible staterooms. So right as we come in here, um, the very first one is inside. So the back of deck seven, there's two inside staterooms, really large. You've got the, the double wide um, door so that you can get a wheelchair through there. And then of course you just uh, scan your key card here and the door opens automatically. I'm just gonna point these out as well. Um, because these two are handicap accessible and they're the back of the ship. So on most ships, some of the most expensive real estate period is the very, very back of the ship. Um, yet these are, you know, deluxe, you know, ocean view state rooms with verandas that are specifically handicapped accessible. So if that's something that you need, um, Disney does a great job from start to finish. Uh, so make sure you reach out because uh, we have some special, uh, special things that we do um, for that so that we make sure that they're notified and that you're prepared for your adventure.
All right, so now I'm currently in the laundrette on deck six. So this is the only one of the three self-service laundry locations that is handicap accessible, just in case you need that. But I wanted to point out a couple things. Is one, on the door, they, they tell you where, you know, where the other ones are, but this is super, super cool. So this is a little kiosk where you, uh, you purchase your washer and dryer, essentially. So a couple things I wanted to point out is first, it tells you how many machines are open in this particular area, how many washers and dryers. Not only that, it tells you across the entire ship how many washers and dryers are open. And what's even cooler than that is that uh, it links with your app because you purchase with, with your card. Um, and it tells you when your washer is, is done um, or your dryer is done so that you can come back. It's just a, a really cool touch. So this particular one has uh, 10 washers and 11 dryers in here. Um, once again, there are three of them. We're on one of the last days of a seven day cruise. So of course they're all going because people are, uh, are taking advantage of it. But it's a really simple process. You, once again, you use your uh, Key to the World card. And after you purchase your tokens, all you have to do is select on uh, the keypad if you wanted to, uh, to do, do, do a washer cycle or a dryer cycle. You just put the card right underneath, it reads it, and it uses the tokens. You have to purchase the tokens at the kiosk first, um, but if you want to purchase just one wash or one dry at a time, you can do that as well. There's not really any advantage to purchasing more than that. And then all you have to do is pick the cycle, you know, whites, uh, white for, for sorry, for a washer, you got whites, colors, brights, uh, permanent press, that kind of stuff. And then uh, for the dryer, you have whites and colors, permanent press and delicates. All you have to do is scan, press it, start it, and then it will actually notify you on both your ship wave phone. And then also, uh, if you have your app on the cell phone, it'll notify you there as well. So when you're traveling with family, it's always nice to have, uh, you know, have access to washers and dryers. It just makes life so much easier. The last thing I wanted to point out is you use your card as well to purchase um, either dryer sheets or, or soap. My, my daughter has pretty sensitive skin, so we actually just bring the pods with us whenever we travel. And so we did that on this one as well. Um, very last thing, just in case you need it, these are great to use whether you're doing laundry or not, if you need to get a stain out or if you, uh, a kiddo has an accident or something like that. You, having these with uh, some good high power hot water is really, really a benefit. So we're now on deck five, which is pretty much the kid's deck on board the Disney Wonder. But I wanted to point out one real quick thing as we headed in. This is actually a popcorn machine. It'll be open up soon when they're uh, getting ready to play Lion King in the Buena Vista Theater. But if you have uh, one of your, your popcorn buckets, uh, the Disney ones, you only have to pay $1.50 to refill it. So just a, a little fun fact that you might want to bring one along with you. So if you follow me in, we're actually going to head to the theater. So one of my all-time favorite things to do on board a Disney ship. And one of my favorite things about Disney cruises in general is that you get to see all of the first run movies and then some of the classic movies. So going in the summer is a really great time. So here right now you've got Avengers Endgame is on currently. So that's now the number one movie in the history of the world as far as uh, selling tickets. And then right after that is Lion King. Lion King actually came out the day before we boarded the ship, but it was already on the ship um, you know, right away. So as you follow me in here, um, if it happens to be a 3D movie, I'm not sure if you can see it because the light's a little dark, but it happens to be a 3D movie, they've got the 3D glasses in there for you. So you just grab them and head on in. Of course, there's no charge. It's all included in your Disney cruise. So the Buena Vista Theater here is modeled after the old uh, movie picture houses of the 1920s and 30s, which is when Mickey Mouse got his start and where Walt Disney did as well. So one thing that I really love, you know, the posters up here, the kids get really engaged. My daughter's new favorite movie is Toy Story 4 for good reason. Duke Kaboom, pretty awesome, but Forky kind of takes it all. So as we head on through here, um, you can see, of course, the Art Deco, you know, all the, the, the shapes, the design, everything is meant to be Art Deco. And one thing that I really, really love is that they give you the schedule for the movies for the entire cruise. So when you board a Disney cruise, they actually give you a program that has all the entertainment throughout the entire week. So you can kind of plan it if you want, or at least know when it's going to be on. So if you miss it one time, you know it's going to be on later, later on. So I'm going to keep wandering on deck five. So deck five is really cool for a lot of reasons. One, got the theater here, all the kids clubs, which take up almost the entire deck. That's a phenomenal amount of space devoted to them. But also you just see characters wandering around. In fact, we we're just filming a second ago. We had to stop because Tiana walked out. My daughter got to walk all the way down the hallway with Tiana, which she absolutely loved. So, so in true Disney fashion, of course, we have a throwback to uh, Disneyland. It's a small world, uh, but this is the It's a Small World nursery. So starting at six months, all the way up to three years old, you can actually drop the little kiddos off. So if you follow me in here, I'll just show you the entry area of it. Um, you get a lot of international guests on Disney. So as we walk in, we've got hello, ciao, hola, bonjour, um, all of those things to make them feel really comfortable. And then of course, just the, uh, the whimsical uh, young child decor. Um, but once again, the nursery is just back through here. And what's unique is you can actually drop them off starting at six months. 
So we're gonna walk a little bit further, but what I wanted to point out is from where we're starting right now, the kids club is all the way through. So there's a really, 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 really cool kids club on board this ship. Uh, my daughter loves it, all the other kids are really digging it. And what they do uh, that's kind of unique is that they have two separate spaces that are really big and they separate them out for different reasons. So as we're heading up here, we're just getting to the, uh, the Ocean Ear Club. So inside the Ocean Ear Club, this is the drop off for eight kids that are three all the way up to 12. So it might seem like a really big age range, but they have a lot of different things going on. So there's two parts. The first one is the club itself. So this is a more character based. So you have Andy's room. That's my daughter's fa favorite spot on the entire ship. They've got the slinky dog slide. You run up the slide, come down quite a few times. She's done that a million times already. So she loves that. Um, they also have kind of the Disney Junior room where you're gonna have uh, Doc McStuffins stuff. Um, uh, the uh, all, all of those characters, uh, like the Disney Disney and the Roadster Racers, so I can think about that for a second. I've seen it enough times I should be able to think about it. Um, you also have a Marvel room. So when we were here the first night, Spider-Man came out, did a little crash course, um, and then uh, you'll see that throughout. So they'll have Marvel characters that interact, but also lots of quests and things to do. And then also finally a Frozen room. So if your kids love Frozen, it's perfect for that. There's also a huge space in the middle there um, where they have games. Uh, we were building a fort the other night. Um, there's two different ways that you can do this. You can do the drop-off. So kids love that where they just go in the club. Um, super, they're supervised the entire time. Uh, one thing that I wanted to point out is kind of how that works. So what they actually do is they give them a, as my daughter calls it, a magic Mickey watch. But um, what it is, is just a RFID chip in there. And so once they go in the room, they can find them at any time. And then they also can communicate with you, which I think is awesome. Every single person on the ship gets a phone just like this. So you can see a text message on there. Um, that was from last night. But uh, but basically, um, what the, the reason I'm pointing these out is you always know where the kids are and they can always contact you if they wanna go. So this is really important uh, for me and my family. In the club itself, as you walk through, there's a secret passageway that goes all the way over to the Oceaneer Lab. So as we're walking this way as well, you can see all of this is still the kids' club. So I'm gonna keep walking up this way. On the way, we're getting to the main atrium. So this is really special on the Disney ship because a lot of stuff is gonna happen here. So you can see they intentionally have really, really wide um, walkways here. So over in the corner there, they're gonna have uh, characters all the time where you can you know, line up. Um, what they do is they, they put up on the screen and they tell you exactly who's gonna be where, when, and then you can decide which one of the characters you wanna interact with. But one of the best parts of a Disney cruise in general is that all the time, they're just wandering around. Like I said, we just ran into Tiana. Right now, they're getting ready to set up for the uh, the Pixar Pals party, so waiting for uh, for Mr. and Mrs. Incredible myself. All that is the, the passageway for the kids on the far side. So we're still technically in the kids club. And then I'm not sure if you can see all the way down that hallway, but that's kind of where the kids club ends all the way down there. But I'm gonna take you into the other entrance. So this is the Oceaneer Lab, which is a little bit different. It's more activity-based. So what you're gonna find in here is right now, um, there's an open house. And so what that means is that anybody can come in and anybody can enjoy it, um, but it's not fully supervised for the kids. So you can't drop the kids off, but you can go in and explore it on your own. So the lab is a little bit different and then it's more experience-based. So they have a really cool light table with, where you can trace, um, they make cookies, they make slime, they do all kinds of fun stuff all throughout the, the cruise. But once again, it's more of the activity-based stuff, whereas the character-based stuff is over in the, uh, the Oceaneer Club. So this is a really fun view for kids. And one thing that I wanted to point out that I adore on the Disney ships is this uh, this plastic or acrylic glass uh, that's here so that they can't climb on these things. You find it all throughout the ship, um, but my daughter loves checking out the views. One other great view is to take the elevator. So head over here. All of these midship elevators are actually um, glass elevators. So follow me on in. You can see you got the glass elevator right here. And Disney does a great job, of course, uh, with uh, you know having the signage up here so you know exactly uh, where you're going. Um, I was just on another cruise ship where I kept hopping in the elevator and had to figure out where it was I'm going. But as you head down, you get a really, really stunning view of the atrium. A lot of times there's characters, there's parties. So it's just a lot of fun for the kids and very interactive. All right, so I'm currently on deck four of the Disney Wonder, which is the promenade deck. Just came out the doors right here. Animator's palette is just behind me for reference. Um, but the big part of this is that the lifeboats are all above us. Um, you have extra uh, life jackets and things like that on, on the deck, like you always would, the safety features. But one of the safety features that I love the most would be um, these, these panels here, right? These are thick glass and kids can't get through them, which for me, having a three and a half year old on board and having traveled with her when she was even younger, it's one of the, the best things because I don't have to stress about that always. So I've been on some other 
other cruises in the last couple weeks that are more traditional don't have those kind of things and so you're always thinking about one more thing so one of the great things about a disney cruise is parents don't have to think about a million different safety things you just have to think about the other million things that parenting involves so we're gonna head on down i always take ava out here every day we go for a walk a lot of times she'll go for a run um, i also love to come out here when we're doing scenic cruising so um, one of the things that uh, that's really nice on this deck are these these thick uh, plush loungers here. They're the perfect place to sit while you're taking in the views. We were just doing some scenic cruising in Alaska, checking out the glaciers and things like that. And this was the perfect place because most people are all the way up in the front and the ship turned all the way around. So we were able to sit here and then we also went up on the back too. But So promenade deck, a little bit wider than, than on most ships. Um, you're going to find some of the other things that you would find on any promenade deck on any ship. Uh, in fact, uh, I see some people up ahead are playing uh, shuffleboard, which is classic. Played it when I was a little kid with my grandparents on board uh, the ship. So now we're at the, uh, the midship. This is the midship elevator, so we're about halfway down the promenade deck. And we're going to keep going all the way down to my daughter's favorite place on the ship. Uh, it's the front of the ship, so it's actually where a lot of things happen. They do welding up there. There's usually some kind of action, somebody working. Um, and then also uh, it's just kind of a secret place. So this is the, the front elevator bank right here. Uh, the theater is gonna be just in front of us. So now we're gonna head into the secret area. Um, basically, um, one of the things that I really, really love is the engagement um, that they do. So by having people working up front, um, a lot of times they'll put like a character dummy or you know, something like that up front as well. It just keeps the kids engaged and coming back. Uh, and it's one more place. So one other great feature about this is that it wraps all the way around. So not all promenade decks go all the way around. Sometimes you have to go inside or cross and back. Uh, but the Disney Wonder made to be like a classic old school ocean liner that it is, it does go all the way through. So now we're gonna head in, there's a little ramp down and then you have the, uh, the area where they deploy the anchors from. And then they also have uh, a workshop up here where they're usually welding or something along those lines. So here we go, you ready? Whee! Got the mirror so you can see who's coming around the corner, and here we go. So we're currently docked right now, uh, so there's not a lot going on, but once again, this is a really cool place to come with kids because you can see a little more about the inner workings of the ship. So that's the uh, one of the anchor chains. There's another anchor chain. Like I said, they have a little workshop up there, uh, but there's always something going on here and always something to look at, which is a lot of fun for every member of the family. So we're getting ready to head into the, the front elevator bank, but I just wanted to point out this is also the jogging deck and being able to go all the way around, it's a really nice way to get a nice, long, you know, steady jog instead of a lot of the, the, lot of the tracks on the top deck of different uh, ships. They, uh, they go around just, you know, just maybe 15 times or something like that on the very top deck. So here we go. All right, so right now we're in the Walt Disney Theater, which is actually covers three decks. So it's a massive theater that seats almost a thousand passengers. And this is where you're gonna find the Broadway style shows. Also, you're gonna find some of the, the first run movies. They play them in the Buena Vista Theater, but also here as well. So we had three full run production shows. My daughter loved it. We actually were sitting front and center. Uh, Olaf was standing right in front of her, waving at her from the Frozen show. And I mean, it doesn't get much better than that, but all the productions have been fantastic. Um, they have the top of the line uh, sound and special effects, all the things that you would expect from Disney. So if you'll follow me over here, um, I really like this row of seats because it has the uh, the extra leg room. I'm a big guy. Um, not a ton of leg room in, uh, in the seats, but I'm 6'6", six, six, so I'm kind of the exception to the rule. So uh, a couple days ago, we saw Lion King in here uh, two days after it came out in the main theaters. Another really cool feature of a Disney cruise. So I wanted to point out one more thing. One, uh, or two more things, sorry. First, you probably want to get there about 20 minutes to a half hour before the show. They open the open at half hour. You can always get the seats you want. If you come later, it might be a little tougher, especially if you have a big group. Um, and then the one other thing I wanted to point out are these, right when you walk in to the theater. These are actually kids' booster chairs. So you just sit them right on the seat. Um, my daughter is three and a half, so she uses one every single time, but that way she can see over the people in front of her. Um, and when we're in the front row, that way she can see over the stage itself. So the Walt Disney Theater is one of the best parts of the entire ship and one of the best parts of all the Disney cruise because you get all those things that you wait in line for at, you know, at the parks, these great shows, you get them for here included. And it's, you know, it's just an incredible experience for every member of the family. So as I head out of the theater, um, the first thing you're going to see is Preludes, which is actually uh, a bar. Um, they have popcorn here as well, so if you have that popcorn container, you can get it refilled here. Um, it, of course, it's closed right now because it's not showtime. Sometimes they'll do character greetings in here as well. My daughter got to see uh, Belle just over here a little bit ago, so it kind of depends on what's going on in the ship. They have lots of these great spaces to spread out. But this is kind of the, the pre-show area, uh, and I just wanted to point out the, uh, the awesome sign and the picture, um, kind of a mosaic, but of, uh, of Walt Disney right there. So. As soon as you, uh, you know, move past this area, 
you get into the Disney retail. So this is awesome for, for every, once again, for every member of the family, except for the one who's paying for it. Uh, but they have, uh, right now they have Wreck-It Ralph. Um, the, the new Toy Story movie just came out. They got the Forky stuff. Um, so, you know, my daughter loves coming in here and looking, and it's also a great way uh, if, if you need them to do something on the cruise to, uh, to earn something. So she's come in and visited Jasmine three or four times, and she's been doing really, really awesome. And so she's gonna earn that for the last night. So just a fun thing to do. She came, she's come in and visited. Um, but they also have some really cool paraphernalia, some, um, some pins and things like that, Disney stuff that you can't get anywhere else. You can only get on the cruise ships. So make sure that you, you figure out how late the shops open the last night of your cruise. And uh, you know, a lot of times people plan to get something and then don't at the end. So just make sure that you know that so that you can get exactly what you want in the shops. So keep on following along here. Um, this is kind of more the, the, the shop that we're just pointing at, um, which is uh, Mickey's main sale. That's kind of the the general, um, you know, all, all the all the different characters and the princesses and everything else. And then White Caps on the other side is more of your high end retail. So you have items in there that sell for thousands and thousands of dollars, of course. Um, and then a lot of the uh, the Mickey things that people are trying to find that are tougher to find at one land. They also have some interactive things. I see the Golden Mickey's which is uh, one of the shows, but it's kind of like an Oscar. That's the whole idea behind it. Uh, but there's lots of, lots of things that are interacting as you know, events happen on the ship. You'll see things pop up here, um, which uh, you know, very, very Disney. So let's head on into the main atrium. So now, as I said, we're at midship. Um, this is the vacation planning center. Um, so basically this is where you're gonna book your future cruises. Um, what's really convenient, if you follow me in here and then look back just a little bit, um, they have an ability to check in and set your appointment time. It's always busy. I, I think I, I heard somebody on the cruise say something about 80 to 85% of the guests on this ship are actually past passengers. And generally the best deal that you can get is on board the ship. Um, right now, I think the promo that they're running is 10% off your future cruise. Um, and that you know combines with other promos and things like that. So, if you're planning on another Disney cruise, it's always good to book it on board. As your travel agent, we can help you when you get back as well. So um, I'm just going to walk around here a little bit to point out a couple things. So one, uh, there's some seating area for the future cruise sales. But over in this corner, you see these really wide uh, walkways. They'll move the furniture sometimes. But over in this corner is one of the places where characters will be. So um, we saw a couple different characters here. Lots of room to play around. They'll have the... Uh, um, the camera set up so they always do the camera. If you're gonna do any of the photos with them, all you have to do every time you get in line, this is important, because sometimes I forget, um, is to get out your, uh, your cruise card and then you give that to the staff member as soon as they get, and then as soon as you get to the front, and then as you go back to Shutters, which is the photo lab, um, you can actually just swipe your card and all your photos from the entire cruise will pop up for you. So once again, this is the area where you would line up for some of the characters. And then last night when they were doing the Pixar Pals party, um, this is actually where, uh, you know, part of the show, and this is where the characters exited. So just behind me now is the, the D Lounge. I'm gonna cover that as we go to the other side, but I just wanted to point out the entrance right here. Um, and then if you'll follow me around, I'll show you the main stairway, which is used by a lot of the characters for coming in and out. It's a lot of fun. And uh, you know, one little fun thing with all of the parties, they always come up the stairs. So I always take my little one, we stand right here. There's a little rope behind it. Um, and that way she can give high fives to all of her favorite Pixar pals or her Disney friends, whichever the ones that we may have missed uh, as we went. So now we are in the D Lounge where a ton of things happen on board. So there is a bar in here, but you're gonna find family karaoke, family trivia, um, you know, some adult stuff. But for the most part, because this is in the full family area, you're gonna find a ton of stuff uh, for every member of the family in here. And it's a ton of fun to play the games against other families or even within your family. So if you follow me up here, there's a, a dance floor up at the front. Got quite a bit of seating. Tell Chip and Dale are on in the background. Usually there's a Disney movie going on here uh, before or after any of the events. Um, but if you'll, uh, you'll follow me around, you can see now I'm on the, the main stage area. This is where you know everything happens. Once again, they do like all kinds of fun, uh, fun games and anything that you can imagine uh, Disney-wise happens right here. So as I exit the art gallery area, you got a ton of great Disney art. My daughter loves to come to look at pictures of Elsa and Anna and all of her friends. Um, but right here is a portrait studio. So you can actually have professional shots. You can see some samples and things like that up here. Um, but you've got professional shots in there. Um, you do need to schedule that. So if you want that, make sure that you do uh, when you get on board. And if you follow me on in, this is the, the entryway to Shutters, which is where you're gonna find all of your photos. So there's a ton of these kiosks all throughout. Take your key to the world card. All you need to do is tap it here and they're closed, so there we go. Uh, they're closed because we're, we're currently docked right now, um, but if you press it bef uh, when, we're, when we're sailing, it's gonna pull up all the photos. You can select one, two, uh, you can also get packages, and of course you can print it on anything that you can imagine, uh, you know, mugs and, and all that kind of fun stuff as well. So, but once again, these are the Disney photos that the professional photographers are taking uh, when you're meeting with the characters or when you're at uh, one of the sail away parties or anywhere on board the ship or right when you get off the ship. And so now we're at the end of shutters, which is kind of where you're gonna find all everything photographic. They also have uh, digital cameras that are duty free, 
when you purchase them when you're sailing, um, batteries and different things like that. So in addition to the professional photographs for you. So one thing that I wanted to point out with uh, the bathrooms on board is that uh, they're almost always very, very close by. Uh, maybe you have to go up one deck or down a deck, but they're always uh, close by. And there's usually three options. So you have the men's, you have uh, the women's, of course, and then you have a, a handicap or a family bathroom. So this is really great. I know it's uh, it's weird to see a picture <laughs> inside the bathroom, uh, but I just wanted to point out that, that Disney does what Disney does. So they've got a great changing station that has wipes and all that. Um, they have the diaper pail over there as well. Um, and then uh, the, the big sink. So just really nice to have everything that you need at the tip of your, your fingers. And that's one thing that I love more about anything else about a Disney cruise is that all of my needs are met, all my daughter's needs are met, and we can always get what we need within a few seconds. So currently we're on deck four aft and we're walking into uh, one of the great restaurant options on board the Disney Wonder. So you have Animator's Palette. This is, uh, I, I think it's the most fun. It's definitely the most interactive of all the restaurants that they have. So on the sides here, as we walk in, uh, you see Tinkerbell and Anna and Kristoff and Ariel, but the whole idea behind it is the animation, right? What what it takes to draw these characters. And so um, one, kids will always find one that they love because they're all here. So we've got Nemo up here and Captain Hook, um, you know, of course, Mickey. Um, but um, what happens is, is as the, as the dinner starts, uh, on the screens inside, they start tracing the Disney characters. So you can kind of see how they how they start them, how they draw them, and as the dinner progresses, it gets a little bit more complex. So follow me on in, and I'll show you the screens that I'm talking about. And this is the main entrance to Animator's Palette here, um, and you see these big screens. So right now, um, they just say Animator's Palette, and they've got, uh, got Mickey up there, but essentially what's, what's gonna happen is as soon as dinner starts, they'll start tracing on these screens themselves and then they become colorful and then as the, as the dinner progresses, they come alive and then Mickey actually comes in, which everybody loves, and it's the, the Fantasia Mickey and, and makes everything full color. So that's the first night uh, that you dine in here. On a seven night cruise, you're always gonna dine twice. Um, and the second night is the one that it's probably most well known for. Um, and that's where you actually create your own drawing. Um, they take them back, they scan them in, you put your name on it and, and you know whatever you want. Um, and then uh, they put them up here. So they become an interactive part of your dinner. So they come you know, jumping around and then everybody's looking for theirs, taking pictures of it. But once again, it just makes the dinner experience really, really interactive. On this particular one, we actually had a third night in here, which was super cool. Um, and because we're in Alaska, it was a frozen theme. So right now you, you see that they have this set up. Um, one of the other things, or two of the other things that they do in here are one, they do the frozen gathering. Um, so Elsa and Anna, they set up a big backdrop. The kids can come in um, and, and meet them, get them to sign their books, um, do, the, do that fun interaction. That is something that you do need to sign up for. It's called the frozen gathering. Um, but uh, when we went, it was really cool. We were the last ones and they just walked with my daughter all the way out and down. It was a lot of fun. Um, the other thing that they do in here are the character breakfast. So um, right now it's the Disney Junior characters, Doc McStuffins and Vampirina and those. Um, but that is something, once again, that you need to sign up for ahead of time. Um, however, I didn't on this cruise because we booked it kind of last second um, and we were able to, to get it. I, I just went very first thing when I got on. We were able to get uh, all those things and the Princess Gathering for my daughter as well. So here's a little bit more of Animator's Palette. You notice that it's considerably smaller than Triton's, which is the uh, the large restaurant where people go in between. Um, but once again, this is one of the, uh, the three main restaurant options that you'll have in your restaurant rotations. So a couple years ago, Disney renovated this space and it became Tiana. So it's an uh, ode to New Orleans and everything Southern jazz. In fact, you can see the crawfish crooners. Um, it's an advertisement for them. But one of the things I love about eating in here is they have live jazz music throughout. Um, and then, you know, put in the, mix in the Disney hits and all that kind of stuff as well. So as you come in, the first thing you notice is uh, the Mardi Gras beads up top and then the big sign for, uh, for Tiana's place. So if we were coming in here for dinner right now, uh, Tiana would actually be standing right out front. She would greet us uh, and then she always goes up to the stage and asks you know, how the food is, talks about it. Um, but it's very interactive to kind of have an, ex an experience with a character in their place. So I, I know my daughter really loves that because Tiana also comes around and says hi to everybody while we're at dinner. So here we go, we'll head on in here to Tiana's place. So they're actually just transitioning right now and getting set up uh, for dinner. Um, so some of it's still covered up, um, but uh, you can get idea of, of what it looks like. So once again, this space is a little bit bigger than Animator's Palette. Um, and so this is one of the rotational dining. So you have Tritons, which we'll go to in just a minute, and then you have uh, Animator's Palette, and you also have Tiana's Place. So I'm just gonna walk you through here up to the stage. Um, you can see all the touches are, are fantastic, you know, from the goblets. It's, it's New Orleans through and through.
So here's the, the main stage where you're gonna have the jazz band on. Um, and then of course they have singing and dancing. And so Louis the, the Crocodile always comes out, plays his horn, um, but this is where you would, would sing and dance. And then they usually start kind of like a conga line with everybody. But once again, that's what Disney does better than anybody else is these truly experiential um, you know, events. So having dinner and having the characters involved and everything else. Uh, once again, my three and a half year old sat through every single meal on the last seven night cruise and on this seven night cruise, which completely blew me away. But that's because you know they've got coloring at the tables. They've got all those kind of things. The, the, um, the waiters are fantastic with kids. Of course, they're choosing to be on a Disney cruise uh, and they love what they do. So one other thing I wanted to point out about this particular restaurant is because it is New Orleans, it is all Southern. So you get fantastic Southern food and on the second night you get the beignets. I'm gonna have beignets in about two hours. My mouth is watering. I'm ready to have them right now. So let's head on back out. We'll see some of the other dining options as we go. Uh, we'll say farewell to Tiana's place until later tonight. Just outside of Tiana's place is the Connect at Sea desk. Basically, this is the internet desk. One unique thing that Disney does, they actually still charge you by the megabyte. Um, so you may, you know, if you need quite a bit of internet, you might want to buy the biggest package. It's about $90, gives you a thousand megabytes, but it, uh, it, it kind of goes somewhat quick. Um, but if you have any issues with the internet, uh, with the, the Navigator app, anything else, this is the place where you're going to go. Um, they have the hours posted, and then they have a lot of great options explaining everything for you. Um, I, I found the app and the entire process of the internet to be very intuitive and very easy. So. I'm gonna continue on to the Promenade Lounge. So this is great for a, a couple things. So one, um, they do arts and crafts in here with the kids. There's a little great kids playroom. You can kind of see it just through the, uh, the door there. There's no kids here yet, um, but this is kind of one of the toddler places where they can come uh, and hang out. You see games here. Um, once again, we're in the family part of the ship. So everything here that, that's done is, is family oriented, family related. So um, we were in here earlier, we were cutting out little Annas and Elsas and putting them together to make arts and crafts. A um, Couple times a day, they'll have that in here. Once again, they have more activities as well. Like uh, it was a toddler family dance party the other night where they were playing um, all, all the best movies from the old fairy tales, which was, was really, really cool. Um, right here, they'll have snacks throughout the day. So had chips and uh, salsa in there a few times. And then you've got a full bar here as well. How's it going? <laughs> there. Um, so in addition to the full bar, um, one of the things that was interesting for me on this cruise is I am traveling uh, with my daughter and without another parent with me. Um, and she, you know, she'll go to the kids club a little bit. She's, she's three, three and a half. We go there all the time when it's uh, when I can go as well, but she's just starting to, to figure that out. But I love a really good coffee in the morning and the Cove coffee shop is actually adults only. So I can't take her in there. So I always come over here and this is where you're going to get uh, a fantastic coffee as well. And you see it's in the, the sealed in nitrogen, the, uh, the Ely coffee. So Delicious, how's it going? Perfect. So that is one thing that I've noticed throughout this entire cruise. Of course, when you have the big events, the theaters, and there's, there's activities going on, um, they fill up. But what I found is there's so much space on the ship, and so many times the kids are in the kids club, they take up almost all of deck five, that a lot of these spaces are open, don't have trouble finding a seat, which I really appreciate having just come off of a mega ship uh, with a uh, you know, lot less seating per, per passengers, if you know what I mean. So. Um, as we keep going, um, I did want to point out this porthole. They have them on two decks, and they're huge, and they're a great place to see, um, you know, to just, just to see where you're cruising uh, and to enjoy. So my daughter and I sit here all the time and look out at, at the ocean. Uh, just behind us is Ketchikan right now, because that's where we're docked. So on, on the right side here, I'm still walking, and you have Tritons. You've got the beautiful windows as well, so you can kind of see out. Uh, when you go on the other side, is up against the windows, um, so you have a little better views on the other side of the restaurant. So right now, embarking, disembarking, you can see the security is all set up here. Um, either side of the ship, sometimes they have it on this side, sometimes they have it on the other side. Uh, but you can see the protocols that you would expect on any cruise ship. Um, they've got the metal detectors and the x-ray machines. And at the end of the day, the idea is we all want to be safe. And so I really, really appreciate how dedicated they are to security. Um, they do ask you to bring a photo ID with you when you get off, and they check it when you come back on. So you want to make sure that you have a, a photo ID with you at all times when you get off the ship. So if you follow me into the, the main atrium, I did want to point out this, uh, here we go, just up here. So there's a screen up here, you see Captain Mickey Mouse right there, but it tells you which uh, characters are going to appear where and when. Um, and, and so like Minnie Mouse, deck four midship, um, that's going to be up on the fourth deck. Uh, right now we're on deck three midship. But last night, this is where we had the huge Pixar party. Um, one little tip, you know, secret for that, is when they do the big parties, they actually rotate the characters around. So if you stay in one place, different characters are going to rotate around to you and dance with you. So my daughter did that last night and loved it. I think her absolute favorite was actually Russell uh, from Up uh, and then Mr. Incredible, but they were, they were partying pretty hard. So um, now we're in the main atrium area and I wanted to point out the aerial statue. So every one of the Disney ships, there's currently four of them, they all have a, you know, a statue that's kind of the centerpiece. In this case, it's Ariel, uh, and then the restaurant is Triton's, which you know King Triton is her father, of course. Um, on the other ships, you have Mickey is one of them, Minnie is another one, and then Admiral Donald Duck. So 
Tritons is just here, but if you follow me over, um, this is the area where you generally board the ship. And one of the cool things on this ship is that um, when we were coming in, they actually were announcing the names and you know, they would ask you real quick. Um, but as your kid walks through those doors in here, sees Ariel, sees all the, the grandeur, um, they actually call your name out um, and they greet you, which is you know, incredibly personal and uh, it's something you don't see everywhere else. So a little more seating area in the atrium. And then I'm gonna walk you over to the port adventures desk. So once again, this is another area where you would board and disembark. And then right now I'm gonna head over to the, uh, the port Ad adventures desk. So once again, you can pre-book your shore excursions. We do recommend that you do, um, but there was still plenty of availability on board for almost every other, uh, every, everything that you would want. So when you get on board, you can always grab one of these. Um, it's a program for the entire cruise. So I've said this a couple times in the video, but I really appreciate that Disney gives you everything all at once. So when you get on, you know all the entertainment when it's gonna happen, you know the dining when it's gonna happen. Um, you even can pull up the menus for two or three or four days in advance. So, but this is the Port Adventures, has all the, the great adventures in Alaska. Um, I've done three Alaska cruises back to back right now and I've been blown away by the quality of the excursions on Disney they do a really really good job they've been in Alaska for a really long time as well um, but uh, but like anything Disney they, they kind of created the hospitality industry in America and they do a phenomenal job at it so one other thing that I didn't point out for the elevators but I really appreciate is that inside and outside the elevators they have like a cheat sheet of where you're going um, so you can always know you know if, if you're going to Pinocchio's you know that you follow the pizzeria all the way up to deck nine midship we're in midship and because they have the three elevator banks it's always really easy to figure out where you are on the ship so once again, I pointed out the Ariel statue, which coincides with the main restaurant, which in this case is Triton. So this is also a stage that, that all the dance parties happen at. And then once again, this is the stairway I was talking about that the characters usually come up and down. So as we're heading into Tritons, um, I did want to show you they have these throughout the ship. Um, they always ask you to sanitize your hands when you go in and out of anywhere, and of course, coming out of the bathroom. But with cruises, it's really important that we all do our part to do that. So I'm going to head down into Tritons. This is used for a couple things. So um, basically, the rotation on this ship is that you get three restaurants. So you have Animator's Palette, which we've already seen. You have Tiana's Plates, which we've already seen. And then you have Triton. So that kind of fills in. So on a seven-day cruise, you're probably going to have two uh, Animator's Palettes, two um, of uh, Tiana's place and then you know maybe three here. Sometimes the balance mixes up. But the other thing that they do in here that I really, really like are the brunches. So they don't do it every single day, but we had it this morning. Uh, we slept in a little bit till about 1045. And so they had the brunch from uh, eight in the morning until noon. Once again, a full breakfast menu, a full lunch menu. It was outstanding. Uh, but it's, it's just, once again, it's something that you really appreciate. And finally, uh, the thing that I think I appreciate more than anything else is the concept of cruise casual. So I like to wear shorts. I like to be casual because in, in work, oftentimes I have to, to dress up um, and I, I don't want to do that every single time. And, and with a family, that's really nice as well. So shorts in the dining room are just fine. They do have the formal night, um, but other than that, it's a really, really relaxed dress code throughout the entire cruise. So once again, we've talked about how good Disney is at uh, tying everything together. But being that this is uh, Ariel or King Triton's restaurant, there's King Triton here, there's Ariel. This is a beautifully stunning mosaic that was designed in the 12th century BC by Greek artist Papa Stapelopoulos. Um, but uh, you can see that uh, they're paying tribute to all of, all of the friends, uh, Sebastian, Flounder, Ariel. Um, but uh, once again, it's just a fun, interactive thing. My daughter keeps going up and talking to, to Sebastian in here. So once again, anytime that you can have interactive and you can have, uh, you know, the kids have a piece of that experience, they're gonna enjoy it just that much more. So the last spot that I'm gonna show you on this tour is the adults only area called After Hours. This is kind of a, uh, a complex per se, where just adults are allowed in the evening and you have three distinct venues that, that once again, satisfy the needs of adults. So the very, very first one that I'm gonna point out is Azure, which is right here to the right. This is kind of the nightclub um, but uh, tonight, for example, they have a, an 18 plus variety show. Um, they have crazy karaoke. And then of course in the evening, the DJs come in. So on a Disney ship where you have lots and lots of kids all around, this is kind of one of the adults only respites on board. There's quite a few of them as, as you've seen already, um, but it's a great space. Uh, and and so a lot of times, especially on the, the shorter cruises, it really gets rocking in here uh, and a lot of fun being had. So the first of the two uh, pubs, bar areas would be the Cadillac Lounge, which is just in front of me like Disney always does. They get it right with all the paraphernalia and uh, all of the uh, nostalgia, of course. But if you come in here, it feels like sitting in an old Cadillac, even the, the leather seats. Um, they've got the, the hubcaps as the, uh, the drink tables here as well. And then even, you know, it's all set up as a, uh, one of the bench seats in the car. Um, live music in here. So if you follow me in a little bit further, um, you'll be able to see the stage. So they have a piano player in here. 
once again, throughout this entire cruise, I've been completely impressed with all of the musicians on board um, and cast members and everything else, of course, but uh, piano has been fantastic on this cruise. And then as you come over here, you can see that the bar is the front end of a Cadillac, of course. So, so every single detail has been you know, tended to as you would expect for a Disney cruise, but this is part of that adults only complex that makes the Disney cruise so much more enjoyable for those who are traveling with or without kids, but just want a few minutes uh, to sit back, relax and be an adult. So now we're heading on to the final venue in the, the adults only after hours area and it's the Crown and Finn pub. So uh, before we get there, I wanted to point out one last bit of retail in case that you needed it. Um, but this, what's important about this particular one is this is where you're gonna find the Alaska specific stuff. Um, so you have Alaska Mini and Alaska Mickey um, and all of those things, once again, things that you can't find elsewhere. So heading on into the Crown and Finn build as a true English pub. So of course, gotta have the telephone booth, right? Ring, ring. I've been watching a lot of Peppa the Pig on this one. So anyway, all right, here we go. So Crown and Finn pub, follow me on in. This is, you can kind of think of this as, as an English pub and a sports bar. So um, come on in, you have some great seating. This is one of my favorite places to sit uh, anywhere on the ship um, because you've got beautiful views out here, big, big, big comfy sofas. Um, they've got, you know, backgammon and chess, uh, different games that you can check out as well. And then they usually have sports on. Uh, right now we're, we're kind of mid-afternoon, so you've got Toy Story on currently. So. Follow me around, you can see a little bit more of the, the bar and the pub area. And then I'll point out uh, one last place to get last late night food in case you need it. So the games are just over here. You got a tribute to Manchester United. Of course, you got to keep up with the whole British pub theme, um, but uh, games to borrow here. And then you have a full bar that once again has some really, really fantastic Alaska Brewing Company ales on, uh, on tap right now because we're in Alaska. Can't have a you know, English pub without a dartboard. And then finally, once again, there's nothing set up here right now, but in the evening, usually 10 to 11 or 10.30 to 12, um, they'll set up a, a kind of a full snack bar here um, with, with lots of you know, little things to, to grab and go. And then of course, you know, if you don't get enough here, when you get back to your room, you can do the 24 hour complimentary room service. Thank you so much for taking your time to join us on this tour of the beautiful Disney Wonder cruise ship. Whenever you're ready to book your Disney cruise, whether it's just two of you traveling together, a family, or a huge multi-generational family group, we know the ins and outs of Disney, and we know how to make a Disney vacation perfect for you. So reach out to hardtravel.com, and we'll take care of you the way that we take care of our family.